You know what the difference is between Doctor Who and The Simpsons? The Simpsons only waited nine years before it destroyed its continuity. Doctor Who waited pretty much 57 years. I am the Kaijin Okami, and this is my quickie review on Doctor Who Season or Series 12. Doctor Who Season 12 is the latest season from the Doctor Who franchise. It continues the story of Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor, all written by Chris Chibnall. And you pretty much know what I'm probably going to say in a moment. But first I want to say that the first season for Jodie Whittaker came out. It wasn't really the greatest. It wasn't bad. I hated some episodes, and then we rewatched it just before the new season came out. It still wasn't great, wasn't bad. I still hated some episodes, but some other ones was like, well, that was not as bad as I remember when it first came out. But there were only really two episodes from the first season I actually liked, The Demons of Punjab and The Witchfinder's General. So I wasn't sure what to think of season two for Jody, but you know what? I was kind of like, well, I'm going to give it a chance because you know what? They can only take the feedback from the last season and improve it. Right? Right? Well, apparently not. But before I get into that, first, we had the great season premiere, Spyfall. Spyfall was incredible. It was well paced, it had some witty scenes, it was snappy. It felt more like a James Bond spy thriller than the more recent James Bond films. There was a whole lot to love. I didn't like that they killed Stephen Fry's character off, which I felt was a little too soon because he was underutilized. I would have loved to have seen more with Stephen Fry, but hey, it is what it is. Part 2 came along, still great. We had the return of the Master. By the way, if you don't know that by now, oops, my bad. There will be some slight spoilers in here. I'm not going to go in through all spoilers, but yeah. So we have the master. He's well acted. I forget the actor's name who played him, but he was in Iron Fist as one of the main villains against Iron Fist. Here, he does a really great job as the master. I have recently been watching Pertwee's era of Doctor Who. I've only got Pertwee's last season left, but I have to say that he was really pulling off his inner Delgado version of the master. So I was really pleasantly pleased with his role. He was doing a really good job. Then this revelation occurs at the end of Spyfall and the next episode starts up, and it's like, okay, are we going to? No, we're not going to talk about the ending of the Spyfall at all. Okay, cool. It's like called Orphan 55. It was awful. It was beating us over the heads on why we're destroying the environment. Just like, boom, boom, boom. Doesn't do it anywhere near with the finesse that the Green Death did for Pertwee. Then we have one with Nikolai Tesla, which was a fairly good episode. Fairly enjoyable. Then we have the next episode, which was The Fugitive of the Jadoon, which brought Jack Harkness back for a pointless cameo that had no reason to exist. It was just garbage. He served no purpose, and the message he was there to bring, one, it was the cliche, I've got a message for you, starts to tell the message, and oh, there he goes, he's sent away. And then this revelation occurs where Hartnell may not be the first Doctor. Another issue with this episode, though, is that every character that was in this episode was pretty much there just to move the plot along. They weren't a character just to be a character, they were just a plot device. That was pretty disappointing. The next episode was about these birds where they're getting sick and just up and attacking people. Another, we suck as a human race, protect the environment type thing, let's shove it down your throat. Which, it, I don't really understand who these are catering to because we, the audience for the most part, we already know we're destroying the environment. We're trying to fix it as best we can. However, we can't fix it when our corporate overlords don't care. So if this episode and the last episode were meant to be voices to us, we know. We already know that crap. If you're meant to be voices to the corporations, they're corporations. They don't give a shit what you think. They're going to destroy the environment regardless because who the hell cares? They have money to survive. We don't. So yeah, your message is lost. Your message is just going on deaf ears. Then we had another episode which was... Oh, that this one was Can You Hear Me? Which was about these gods and dreams and nightmares, which was kind of a cool concept. Except it felt extremely rushed. This story should have been a two-parter. It was actually fairly well done until its last act, and then it just fell to pieces. Then we had, which was originally 
the best episode of the season and was my favorite episode to Whitaker's run, The Haunting at Villa Diodata. It was about Mary Shelley and Percy and all that stuff revolving around Frankenstein. It was really well done. It was incredible. The camera work was excellent. Like there's this scene, Graham comes around this corner, the camera's just facing the audience. Graham's walking towards the audience. You see this body in the background. The body is just there. Graham goes up these stairs, the body disappears, and then Graham comes back around the corner uh, and starts walking towards the audience again. That was incredible. This entire episode was atmospheric. It brought in a Cyberman who looked really cool. It was like, wow, this Cyberman has some good story. This Cyberman's got a backstory. This Cyberman can be fully fleshed out because he's got half his face showing. This is awesome. <laughs> Get it? A Cyberman fully fleshed out? Never mind. And then we have Ascension of the Cybermen, which is part two of this three-part finale. Um, the Doctor isn't really doing much in this story. They have this whole time-wasting thing where they're setting up this equipment that doesn't even work, doesn't even do anything. There's all this stuff that happens, and I don't know, it was a mess. It was just like, it started, I watched it, stuff happened, and then it ended. That's it. And then we have... The season finale. <sighs> Ignoring the retcon crap, which I will get into when I eventually do a spoiler video. This episode was boring. It was with commercials about 93 minutes long. From 6pm to 7.33 it aired. By like 6.40 I'm like, oh my god, how much longer does this have to go? This is on until 7.30? Oh. And it kept going and going. And then when 7.30 came around, I was like, wait, it's 7.30. Why is it not over yet? Why did it just go to commercials? There's still more? And then when it ended, it was just like, that's it? That was anticlimactic. The whole episode, even the Cyberman stuff was like, that's anticlimactic too. They did absolutely nothing with this Cyberman that they just had for two episodes prior, who they could have done so much with. But no, can't do that because Chibno has to throw in his whole crappy retcon plot crap that I'm not even going to... Why? I saw the best article headline today. It said, Doctor Who trades in her TARDIS as a police box for a dumpster fire. And it's totally true. There's so much wrong with it. I won't get into it right now, but ugh. All I can say is that this has pretty much ruined Doctor Who for me. At least the new stuff. I'm still enjoying the old stuff. I still have to finish Pertwee's era. And I still have not seen really much of anything from Hartnell except his first three stories and his last story. So there's still a lot of Doctor Who for me to enjoy. And then I do want to rewatch the Tom Baker years, especially with all the uh, Blu-rays coming out. Chibnall has made Colin Baker's era of Doctor Who look like a masterpiece. How? And BBC apparently doesn't care. BBC says that Doctor Who is the best it's ever been. Chibnall said that he's going to write the show he wants to write because Doctor Who is not a democracy. So who cares what anyone else thinks? This is a man who went on TV as part of a Doctor Who fan club during Colin Baker's run and says, the show is not very well written anymore. I could write better. Well, he's had his chance and he has proven he is just as inept as the people who did Colin Baker's run. But hell, at least the people who did Colin Baker's run were trying to make a good show. I have no freaking idea what Chris Chibno is trying to accomplish other than destroying all of Doctor Who continuity. Doctor Who has just become Star Wars in what has recently happened. All the stuff dealing with Jodie Whittaker's run as the Doctor is no different than The Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. It has just completely destroyed the entire franchise, spat on everything everyone loved about it, turned the Doctor into basically a god, and that's that. I don't know if I'm going to come back for the rest of this run. I will wait probably until Chris Chibno is done. Like I said, I have plenty of old Doctor Who to still watch. The first three seasons of what's available, I still need to see those. So, 
That's that. If you really want me to give Doctor Who Season 12 a rating, it's going to be a pathetic 4 out of 10. The only reason I'm giving it a 4 out of 10 is because of the haunting at Villa Diodata and Spyfall. Other than that, this season was shit. They still don't know what they want to do with this Doctor. They're still not having fun with the aspect the Doctor is a female. I'm just done. Have you watched Doctor Who Season 12? If not, why? Are you just sick of the current stuff? Did you not like Chris Chibnall? Are you not a Doctor Who fan? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments. Click like, click subscribe, click the bell notification, click whatever else YouTube has you clicking on to support me. You can support me on Patreon at Kaiju no Kami, Twitter Kaiju no Kami, Facebook Kaiju no Kami, Instagram Kaiju no Kami, and my website creativitybydesignllc.com. Until next time, bye.